So let's set up some attacks for our character, okay? So this is going to be a heavy chapter based on setting up transitions in our animator window. So I'm going to just prepare you guys for that. I think this will be the chapter we really learn start when you really start learning how the animator transitions work between different animation states. So I'm going to work with my basic attacks here. So I'm actually going to uh, take some of these nodes and just get them out of the way so I can, don't interfere with my three attacks we have going on right now. All right, so I'm going to put those right there. All right, so the first thing we're going to start in this chapter is setting up our relationships between our attack nodes and our walk and idle nodes. So I'm going to set them up like so, so I can see a nice relationship between the two, maybe give some space between them. So maybe go ahead and set your window to look like this. All right, so the first thing we're going to have to do is set up a new parameter over here in our parameters tab. And I'm going to call this parameter a bool attack, like so. So what's going to drive our transitions between our idle and walk into our attack string is going to be this Boolean flag we're going to set up. So why don't we go ahead and set up our transitions between our attacks. So if I'm in idle, I want to make a transition into attack. And I'm going to click on my little arrow here. And I need to set its condition. So I'm going to set it to attack. So as long as my attack boolean is flagged true right here, we're going to cycle straight into my first attack. So with my arrow clicked, I need to set up a few things here. I need to unclick, or I need to have exit time set up, I think. Yeah. Now I will uncheck exit time. And I'm going to set my fade in and fade out to be really small. In fact, I'm going to use the mouse wheel to zoom in. That way I can get a better picture of the transition. So from straight from idle, I don't want to play any of the idle, rest of the idle animation. Wherever I am in idle, I'm going to go straight into attack one. All right. So now that I got a transition set up here, why don't I make a transition back to idle for when I'm not attacking? So I'll click the transition arrow. I'll give the Boolean attack, but this time I'm going to go false. So if we're not currently attacking, we're going to transition back to idle. I'm going to set up the transition time again. And this time I'm going to leave has exit time set up to yes, because we want the full attack animation to play before we exit back into idle. So we're going to give our attack an exit time so it can play out every single frame of the attack here. So with this transition set up, I can now uh, go into my code and start writing the code to go in between this idle state and this attack one state. So why don't I bring up my code real quickly. And we're going to create the code for whenever I click the left mouse button, I'm going to attack now. So under fixed update, all right, well, let me open up this script real quickly, the right script. So under, uh, let me see. So under uh, my movement uh, code here, in fact, I'm going to add some comments here that'll easily let me see what part of the code I'm in. So I'm going to call this movement and just kind of create a comment to break it up. I'll copy and paste movement. I'll put it right here. And why don't we call this combo attack? And just add a little bit of space just for readability's sake. So under a combo attack, I want to test whether or not I'm holding down the left mouse button. So if input dot get mouse button zero, which is left click, if that's true, if I'm holding it down, I'm going to call that Boolean attack in my animator window right here. I need to set the value here to true. So we do that by accessing my animator variable that we described right here, that we initialized right here, 
and declared right here. This is just our variable for getting at our animator component. So animator dot set bool. And what do we want to set? We want to set attack one the true and put a semicolon. And then I need to do a else if I'm not holding down the mouse button. Animator dot set bool attack one equals false. All right, great. So th this, these uh, four lines of code are going to check whether or not I'm holding down the left mouse button. If I am holding down the left mouse button, and that's this conditional statement is true, we're going to go to my attack one Boolean value, or actually it's just called attack, my bad. My attack Boolean value, which is found, let me minimize this, I'll zoom in here. I'll minimize this. My attack boolean value is found in my animator window, and that's attached to this transition into attack. So if attack is true, which we are setting it to be true in this line of code, then it's going to trigger this transition into my attack. So I'm going to save here, and let's hit play and see what happens. So if I, as I hold down the left mouse button, I'm constantly attacking because I'm in my attack one state. All right, great. So let's just review what I'm doing. So right now we're in idle. If I hold down the left click, now you can see attack queuing up. We're in attack one state and I'm just attacking over and over again. So now I can attack. So if I'm moving and hold the left mouse click, I can't attack anymore. I'm clicking the left mouse click. Why can't I attack? I've already set up attack. But if I'm standing still, I can attack. Well, we need to go back to my animator window. And we'll notice there's no relationship between walk and attack one. So while I'm in the walk state, Unity doesn't know that I want to go to attack one. If attack the attack parameter is true or not. So we need to set a transition from walk into attack, just like we did to idle. So click on the transition from walk, set up the attack Boolean value to true, adjust the time right here so the transitions are not terrible. And sometimes you may accidentally make it too small. Well, you can just mouse wheel click in and click and drag. And you can see a little bit more of what's going on here. We want we don't want the walk animation to cycle all the way through before we go into attack. So we're going to say our walk animation has no exit time, meaning we're going to go straight into my attack animation. And that should be all I need. So I'm going to hit play. And as I'm walking. I can attack now. But you'll notice that looks kind of funny because now I'm just sliding on the ground and attacking. We're going to handle that in a second. But why don't we go through and set up our whole attack chain. And then later we're going to hit attach our hitboxes. So now no matter if I'm idle or if I'm walking, I can now attack. All right, great. So what about the rest of the combo chain? Well, how do I do this? Hmm. Well, I guess I need to set up some relationships and I can go straight into and chain all these attacks by making transitions like so. All right. So I click, I make a transition from attack one to attack two. I click on the little arrow. And again, we're just giving the attack the true value. All right. I'm setting my fade time so they go right into another. Oh, and what happened? My timeline just disappeared. I don't, if that happens, all you have to do is start over. You're just going to delete that transition. Select your transition arrow. Press delete on your keyboard. Delete that. Make a new transition. Click on it. So maybe zoom in with your mouse wheel so you can see better what's going on so you don't accidentally make it too small. And it just happened again. Crap. 
So make your transition like so. Now don't make that too small. And we are going to have an exit time on this one because we won't attack one to fully play its animation. Okay. But we still need to give it our attack boolean true. And let's do the same thing to attack three. So what we're doing is we're effectively chaining attack one to attack two to attack three. So attack is true. Let's set up our timeline like so. Make sure exit time is still set up. Now let's see what happens when we press play. All right. So I'm not holding down left trigger. And now I'm just spinning around like a madman. What's going on now? Well, as you can see, if we look at my attack three, there's no arrow or path leading anywhere else. So we're just stuck in attack three now. Same thing if I hit once and hit twice. Now I'm just stuck in attack two. So now we need to make transitions back to our idle position if we only attack twice. So we're going to make a transition back to idle from attack two. We're going to make sure it has that exit time, I believe. Yep. Make sure it has exit time. We're going to set up our fades right here. And now, whenever attack is false, and we're in the middle of attack two, we're going to transition back into idle. Now we're going to do the same thing from attack three. We're going to make a transition right back into idle. Set up our fade time like so. Let's give it our attack. We're going to set that to false. So anytime I'm not holding down the left mouse button, I now have three transitions that check if attack is false, and they're going to lead back to idle for me. So now when I attack, I go straight back to idle. Like so. Now you can kind of see we're getting some cool functionality with our character. All right, great. Okay, so everything seems to be good. We're good with attacks, right? I'm just going to hold it down. Well, shoot. As I'm holding down the left mouse button, now I'm stuck in attack three. I don't go through my combo chain again. Like, if I hold it down, I can go through it, but I want it to automatically, from attack three, go to attack one. So, what we got to do is make a transition from attack three back to attack one. <laughs> this is where your animation window is going to start looking like a spider web. So, carefully click that transition back from attack three to attack one, like so. And we're going to set up our transition the same way we've been doing. Ah, crap. Let me redo that. I don't know why Unity does that. We're going to set up our fade time, not to be so much. But in this condition, attack, if the attack is still true, we're going to loop back to attack one. So now, when I hold down my left mouse button, I can now effectively chain between all of my attacks. And, I, and if I let go of my left mouse button, no matter what attack I'm in, I go straight to idle. All right, great. So now my attack logic is set up and all it took were four lines of code to drive the Boolean flag of attack in my window here. This time I'm going to press play. Pay attention to attack setup right here. And you'll see it flagging on and off. So I'm not holding left mouse button. I am now. Hmm. My window seems to not be updating. Let me fix that real quick. I'll be right back. So a second ago, I had a problem where I wasn't seeing by the states cycling through their animation. I wasn't seeing the update to attack and everything. So all I had to do was close the tab. I guess this is a bug in Unity right now. And just pull up my animator window again and redock it to where I wanted. Select Gambit. Select Parameters. And now I'm back to where I was. And now you can actually see the progress bar. I can see my speed being updated. 
And now you can see my attack boolean checking yes or no. And look how this cascades. Now you can get a better idea of what states we're in. So if I let go of my left mouse button, I'm not cycling through my attacks. I go straight to idle, and attack is now set to false. All because of these four lines of code here. So I need to do something now. I need to set up hitboxes so the game knows when I attack, I'm doing damage. So this is going to be pretty cool. We're going to set up a few things in our script and in our scene view. So I'm going to make my scene view a little bit bigger here. What we need to do now is we need to create four cubes. So 3D object cube. And for right now, I'm just going to kind of leave them. I'm going to reset their value. And now I'm going to create call this cube hitbox. And this is going to be the cube that tells the, the uh, tells Unity that this is Gambit's area. If anything collides with this box, he's going to take damage. So we're going to set this box. We're going to scale it. Notice we already have a box collider attached to it. And why don't we go ahead and make that a trigger? All right. And we want to do something else real quick for uh, the sake of editing our hitboxes easily. Why don't we go to our materials folder down here in our project view. And let's create some new materials. Let's create a hitbox material. And let's give it an albedo of red. Let's make it transparent so we can control the transparency of the material. We want to click on our little solid color here and in our alpha channel, we want to kind of set this low. And I'm going to assign this hitbox that material. So now, let me call this hitbox, Matt. Now I have a red hitbox that describes Gambit. And now we just kind of size it to where it fits him. So this is going to be describing the vulnerable parts of our character here. So I'm just going to scale it like so. All right. Switch out of 2D. And how wide do you want it? This will be a personal preference, but I'm going to do about this wide. So now this is anytime another hitbox collides with Gambit here, we're going to have code later on that says take damage. So I'm going to put this right under Gambit. I'm going to nest that right under Gambit. And I'm going to duplicate it. And now we have, we're going to set up a attack one box. And why don't we go and duplicate our hitbox mat? Let's call it, I don't know, uh, attack box mat. And let's give it a green color. All right. And let's assign our attack box to the cube here. Now we have a transparent attack box. For right now, I'm going to select my hitbox. And I'm going to uncheck it to deactivate it. And now I need to set up the attack box for my first attack. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to select Gambit. And in my sprite renderer component, if I press play, you can see that this is what controls what sprites being displayed here. It's just cycling through my idle sprite. But you'll notice that when I unpress play, it just defaults to for the 48th frame of my Gambit sprites. Well, so I can get an idea of the range of my first attack. I'm going to go grab my sprites, attack one. And I'm going to move Gambit 225 into my sprite box. And now it changes the default sprite that is displayed in the scene view. But if I press play, I have it set up where it defaults back to the regular idle animations. So it's not changing anything. It's just giving me an idea of the range in which this punch is going to take place. So I'm going to go to 2D view, and I'm going to adjust it from the left side will be about the middle of his body. And the right side will be the end of his fist, like so. So when I attack, this hitbox here is going to tell the game that anything inside this green box is not going to take damage when I do this attack. And we're going to set up that functionality in a second. We're just going to make our hitboxes right now. 
All right. And tags will play an important part, but for right now, we're just going to leave that to untagged. All right. We'll set up our tags when we start setting up our collision between different characters. That's going to come much later in this whole project. But for right now, keep in mind that our tags are going to be important with these hitboxes. All right. So that's my attack one box. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to deactivate it here in my inspector. And we're going to make one for attack two real quick. Attack two box. Same thing. We're going to select Gambit. We're going to go to my attack two box. And we're going to try to figure out, we can maximize what sprite we're looking here. If I select which sprite here, we can see all the frames of my second attack. So I'm going to base the range of my second attack on this sprite right here, 229. So now that I know which one I want, I'm going to select my Gambit game object. I'm just going to drag and drop 229 into the default static sprite in our scene view here. Now you can see that my second attack has a little bit more range than my first one. So what I want to do is I'm going to go into 2D view. I still want to keep the left side of my hitbox in the middle of the character, but I want to make sure that I'm getting the full range of that bow attack like so. So just a little bit more range. That looks pretty good to me. It's lining up with that bow hit right there. And we're lining up on the middle of my character. That way, any character that is close to my gambit, any enemy that's close to me, can be hit from right close to me right here all the way to the end of my bow staff. We're not getting cheated. We don't want to just do the end of my bow staff like this because any character that might be closer will just completely get missed and it won't make sense. So make sure you're getting your hitboxes, your dimensions right on those. All right, great. So why don't we make one more for attack three? All right. Deactivate hitbox attack two box. Now we're working slowly with attack three. I need to go to my attack three animations. And depending on which one it is, the 337 looks to be about the maximum range of that attack there. So I'm going to select Gambit, drag. 237 into my sprite and now i can see how long and then this is a pretty long attack right so i really want to make sure i get that full range i'm going to slide it over here to the middle of the body like so and why don't i just why don't i go ahead and activate all of them there you go and you know what Maybe instead of doing it from the middle of the body, maybe we should all have the left side of all these hitboxes start at the same area. Because, you know, if the enemy's like right here, and let's go ahead and load my uh, first idle sprite like we had it into my gambit. So, attack box one will begin right here, two will begin right there, still kind of in the middle here. But we see something different here. Attack box three, Gambit kind of goes forward, and now the middle of his body is right here. So in any enemy that might have been right here could be missed. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we're still kind of putting all of our hitboxes in the middle part of our idle animation. So this is going to be tricky because we got to remember where this little bounds is. So I'm going to do a trick. I'm going to put, take the camera and line it up to the bound of that right there so I know exactly how far this was. Now I can adjust my hitbox and get about the same range as we had before, like so. All right, great. So now we have all three hitboxes, plus, or attack boxes rather, plus my hitbox. So if I go into 2D view, now we can see them all. All right, great. So now we need to have code that drives whenever these attack boxes show up. Because if we constantly just have them going on, Look, look at this little attack box. I have just like three attacks constantly up. I need to be able to drive into code when to activate and deactivate these hitboxes based on which attack I'm doing. And if we want to get really slick, we can only activate the hitbox when we're at the height or the exact range that we were basing our hitboxes on in the first place. So if Gambit was like, uh, let's say, let me grab my attack two sprite, for instance. And let me load it back into my thing here. So 
what if we wanted to just activate our hitbox at the maximum range when it would uh, ex uh, connect with our enemy? Well, we're going to set that up now. Our, our attack two box will only activate when we hit this frame of animation, which would be like the terminal or the uh, connection frame, if you will, for the attack. The attack, that, the frame of animation that will actually connect with our enemy. So we're going to set up a series of uh, components or game objects in our controller script. Let me minimize this rigid body right here. I want to move this up. I want my uh, controller script at the bottom of my inspector there. So what we want to do is we need to set up, we need to see what sprite we're currently on in my sprite renderer. And we need to compare what sprite we're currently on to the sprite we want to activate my hit bo uh, my attack boxes. So let's set that up right now. And we have a few variables we need to set up real quickly. So we're going to go up to the top here. And let's make some new public variables here. Public, and it doesn't matter where you put them. It just needs to be uh, in with all the rest of your variables. Public game object and attack one box, attack two box, attack three box. All right, I'm gonna hit control S. We're gonna see Gambit's controller script now updated. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to assign each of these game objects to the attack boxes we just made. So now we can access these hip, these attack boxes inside of our code. Because now we have public game objects assigned to them, all right? Next, we need to be able to get to our sprite renderer so we can see what sprite is actually being displayed when we press play. Our sprites are cycling. We need to be able to get at what sprite is being displayed. I'm going to attack now, and I want you to see the sprites jump up to the 200s, all right? And now they go back down to the mid, the mid 50s or so. So we can actually see what sprite is being displayed here. And we can actually key what attack box is activated depending on what sprite animation is being drawn on the screen right now. If we can get at the sprite renderer component. So to do that, it's pretty easy. We just type in sprite renderer. And let's call it current sprite. That's going to be the variable name that we're going to be able to get at. So anytime we want to access my sprite renderer, we're just going to use current sprite here. All right. And what we need to do now is let's go back up here. Public sprite. Bear with me now. And we're going to have attack one sprite. Hit frame. It's a big variable name, but I want you guys to know exactly what we're doing here. We're going to assign to these public sprites what uh animation frame we want our attack boxes to appear on so i'm just for the lazy man's sake i'm going to copy and paste that and update them like so attack two and attack three hit control s to save and now i have attack one sprite frame attack two sprite frame and attack three sprite frame so what are we going to assign here well, remember those uh, frames we were using to base our distance of attack? We're going to assign those to our sprites. So now we can tell Unity, okay, anytime that Gambit does frame 225, which is the full extension of his first punch, I want to compare that to the sprite that's being drawn currently. So I'm going to go ahead and assign all those there. So I think... 229 right here goes to attack 2. Let me just drag it correctly this time. And in our attack 3 sprites over here, these are all the sprites we have for my attacks. Uh, 237 is the uh, frame of animation in which we're going to hit our enemy because it's the longest extension of the animation right here. So what was that, 237? So I'm going to select my Gambit character, click and drag 237 onto attack three sprite hit frame. Now we have to do a little bit of code that'll activate these attack boxes according to whatever sprite we're currently on. All right, so let's go to my combo attack area and let's uh, 
finish this attack, lesson out. All right, so this is going to be real self-explanatory. We've already set it up really good. If attack one sprite hit frame, so if my extension of my first punch equals equals the current sprite, or actually equals current sprite dot, what is it? What do I do? Dot sprite. There we go. What are we going to do here? So what did this mean? If our current sprite hit frame, which is our sprites down here, equals our current sprite. This is our current sprite. So this points to our sprite renderer. Remember, we uh, we set current sprite. I know this is confusing. We set our variable current sprite to be able to access sprite renderer. Well, what we need to do now is we need to declare this right here. We forgot a step, but we're going to fix that right now. So what is current sprite equal? Well, current sprite is going to equal get component sprite renderer. All right. So now current sprite is going to get the component of sprite renderer. So when we're doing our checks down here, current sprite dot sprite, whatever is being drawn right now. So this little dot sprite is going to point to this value right here. If current sprite frame equals the same sprite that's being drawn in my sprite renderer, then we're simply going to activate that attack box. And we do that by saying attack one box uh, dot game object dot set active equals true. Okay, control S to save. All right. So now we're going to go back to my attack boxes. And to set this up correctly, we're going to just flat out deactivate them. All right. So this game dot game object dot set active true corresponds to this check mark in our inspector. So this is going to be toggling this check mark that activates the game object on and off. So with all of these turned off, I'm going to maximize this. So we're walking around. You can see that my damage box or my hit box or my vulnerable box is following me. So when I punch, I activate my green box. But something's wrong here. It activates, but it doesn't go away. So now I'm just constantly hitting enemies, even though I'm not actively attacking. We need to add something here. We need to have a else statement. And we need to say, why don't we just copy and paste this? And now we can turn it to false. For every other instance here. So basically, if the current frame right now is any other sprite besides the attack one hit frame we assigned, we're going to deactivate attack one box. So let's see what happens here. And look at that. My green box shows up with every punch and goes away when I'm not punching. That's pretty slick, huh? So what we need to do now is we need to set that up for every attack. So what we're going to do is we're going to just copy and paste this if statement. And this time we're going to do an else if. And we're going to go attack, attack two and set the attack two. So we're just updating this. So just copy and pasting. And we're doing this for attack threes. <laughs> and now we need to set our attack one box like so. Oh, my cat wants to play fetch. Better throw his mouse. All right. Attack one. Yeah, my cat plays fetch with me when I'm working. It's annoying, but it's cute. All right. So now I've gone in and set all this logic up for you guys. You know what? Maybe I should. That's a little bit confusing. Why don't I format it to where it's a little bit more readable? Like so. All 
I was just being a little bit lazy or not, not lazy, but a little bit more uh, efficient with my formatting so I didn't waste as many lines of code, but it kind of turned into a nightmare to read for you guys while I'm teaching it. So I'm going to go through and add all the brackets. So these strings of if and else ifs check to see if the sprite hit frames we assign match the current sprite being rendered. And if they do, they activate each one of these hit boxes. And if they don't, they deactivate the attack boxes. I keep mixing attack and hit, but you know, know what I mean, not what I say. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are getting it. All right. So I'm walking around. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Well, what's going on there? It didn't activate my other two attack boxes. So let's figure out what's going on here. You know what? I guess it pays to uh, save your save your code. So control S to save. There we go. So now when I press play, boom, boom, boom. You can see for a split second, my attack boxes are being displayed. They're following my character. They're even switching with me. Now I have my attack boxes set up and my get hit attack box or my vulnerable attack box in red. So for a split second, you can even see the shadow if a little bit of green is hard to see in the video. I'm activating my hitboxes and deactivating them when I need to. So that's going to be a really cool way we can handle what all the attacks do. Because maybe uh, attack 2 box does a little bit more damage and attack 3 box knocks down the enemy. So now that we have all these separate different hitboxes for the attacks, we can specify what kind of damage they do individually. And now that we're using our intelligently using our sprite renderer and setting our sprite hit frames up and comparing what hit frames are to the current sprite frame being rendered, we set up our hit boxes. So we've just kind of created a semi intelligent system for displaying our damage, like so. So that does it for this video. In the next video, we're going to see how we can start taking damage. And it's going to be a little bit uh, a little bit tricky to test it because we don't really have another character colliding or doing attacks to our character. So we're just going to set up a test environment in which we queue damage according to like a, a keyboard press, like the letter Q. But if we can get those animations set up in our animator window, we've already got half the battle done. And later on in the project, we're going to be able to to find the relationships between attack boxes and hit boxes, assign the tags, check for the collision, and really set up combat nice. All right, so we're kind of going to call it quits uh, just getting our animation set up. We're not going to really get into actual combat mechanics quite yet. We're just setting up our uh, character controller and our animations. So in the next chapter, we're going to be uh, looking at taking damage and queuing our damage animations. All right, I'll see you then.